Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and once again, we are managing the score manager, and we're continuing to pulverize our percussion. And we're also looking at the second layer of the percussion layer cake in Finale, which is the percussion MIDI maps. And as I mentioned previously, this is the deepest level of the, uh, the cake that we can actually customize. Now there's two ways to get into the percussion MIDI map designer. We can go through the score manager if we choose one of our percussion instruments and press settings over here by notation styles, um, choose edit for our percussion layout and get to the percussion layout designer. And in the upper right hand corner, we'll see percussion MIDI map and it will list what it is, but we can press the new button here and this will take us to the percussion MIDI map editor. There is a second way to get there more directly. If you go to MIDI audio and choose device setup, you can choose edit percussion MIDI maps and this takes you to the exact same percussion MIDI map editor. Now these percussion MIDI maps are actually built into the annotation files of Finale. So they will be available for whatever Finale file you have open on your computer. And uh, there's sort of a two little nested things going on here. There's a device and the map. So if you choose a device uh, option here, you'll see there's, in my case, I have five devices. Uh, if you don't have no performer, this one won't be here, but uh, the other four will be um, uh, out of the box in Finale, you get all of these instruments. So you can choose Garreton instruments, and then under the map, you can see all of the percussion maps that are available for the Garreton uh, device, right? If we choose a different device, we'll go to Smart Music. Uh, we get a completely different set of MIDI maps, right? So the MIDI maps are dependent on the device itself. Now within the maps list here, if we wanted to create a new percussion MIDI map, we just choose new map and you can rename it and then you can start adding note types, which I'll show you, uh, I'll show you soon. Um, or you can just edit any one of the percussion MIDI maps that exist here. We can also press the remove button if you've created a map that you don't like and just click remove. I won't do that here, but that's what will happen. Um, we can also add whole new devices. And uh, we do that with this new button over here. And I'm just going to press that. And this is actually going to take us to a, uh, a save window on your system. And I'm actually going to create a new one here called battery, because I'm going to get to this later. And I'm going to press save. Now this is actually creating a whole new uh, annotation file. And I'm going to show you exactly what that is and uh, kind of why it's important. I'm going to actually go into my uh, browser here, or my finder rather, and uh, take you to this Finale 26 folder. There's a uh, folder here called MIDI Device Annotation. Now I'm going to list a file path for Mac uh, on the video right now. And uh, if you go through this file path, you will get to this folder. Um, and I'm going to list the ones for Windows too. The, I actually found two of them. I'm not sure which is which. I'm not a Windows user, but I believe one of these will take you to this folder, or perhaps both of them, depending on which version of Windows you have. Um, somebody that's a Windows user might have more um, uh, useful information about this. Maybe you can put it in the comments, but I believe one of these two paths will get you there. And once you're here, you'll see the list of, these are actually XML files, but they're specifically for the uh, MIDI device annotations and the, the uh, percussion MIDI maps. And you can see that I just created a new one here called Battery, uh, created today. Now the important thing to realize about these XML files is that uh, when you create new MIDI maps within the devices, these uh, XML files will actually update and they will actually change and they will ultimately become unique. This is somewhat important because these MIDI device annotation files are specific to the uh, version of the program. So if I go back a couple folders, get into my Make Music folder here, you'll see that I've got a Finale file, which is actually Finale 25, and a Finale 26 file. Now when Finale 27 comes along, it's gonna put a new folder here for Finale 27, and what I might want to do is take all of these MIDI device annotation files and copy them over into the um, Finale 27 MIDI device annotation folder so that any updates I've made or any changes or additions I've made to these XML files will uh, eventually get into the Finale 27 version. Otherwise, Finale 27 is going to have the default set of XML files here, and you're basically starting over. And of course, these XML files can be uh, shared between users if you really want. If you need to send somebody this battery XML, for example, uh, you can do that and they can install that, to, that um, XML file in this particular folder. All right, so that's sort of what's going on with these files. It's sort of important to realize that these files will get changed um, and they are only really specific to that particular version of Finale. So that's what's going on. Let's go back here, back to the edit percussion MIDI maps. 
And uh, for now, let's go back to Garrettin. And what I'm going to do here is actually create a new map. And I'm going to call this my new map. And I'm going to show you how to actually use this uh, editor. It's actually fairly simple. Basically, what you do is you go into this Select a Note Type to Add menu here, and you get all of the uh, percussion instruments that Finale defines. They're all within menus and submenus in here, so you can choose whatever you want, including a whole uh, list of 128 custom uh, instruments that you can also add. So it's rather it's fairly simple. You just choose an instrument. I'm going to choose the bass drum, and you're going to press Add Note Type, and it will add that to the list. Once it's highlighted, you can actually just press a uh, note on your MIDI keyboard and it will enter that note. If you want to change that note, just uh, click there once, I think. Yep. And you can actually type that to something else if you need to. All right. And then we can just add another one. Let's add snare drum. Add note type. Again, we can just press the MIDI key and it will change it. Uh, we can even add uh, custom note heads or custom instruments rather. And if we choose one, we do get the option of actually, oops, I do have to add it. We do get the option of actually changing the name. So I can call this my snare. And again, I can choose a note to, uh, to uh, assign it to. And I mean, basically, that's it. That's how you sort of build a percussion MIDI map. The important question is really why? So it's kind of uh, important to understand the relationship between the note types here in the percussion MIDI maps and the note types within the percussion layout, which I showed you. you. You know, you saw that this list is fairly similar, and this list is also available in the percussion layout. Well, when you add the the notes here, the note types here, and assign it to a MIDI note, and then add this note, the same exact note type in the percussion layout, Finale will now know that the bass drum from the layout will trigger MIDI note 37, right? We could literally, in this percussion MIDI map editor, put anything on MIDI note 37. But whatever that particular note type is, when you use that in the percussion layout, it will always um, trigger MIDI note 37. What this does not do is actually change which note on the keyboard, the bass drum or whatever sound, the snare drum, the hi-hat, whatever it is, does not change where that sound appears on the MIDI keyboard. So in the Garrettin instruments, for example, the, the kick drum is always on the C two, C, two octaves below middle C. That you can't change, and that is MIDI note uh, 36, actually. And so you can call this whatever you want. You could call this um, ratchet, for example, and if it's assigned to MIDI note 36, if you put the ratchet in the percussion layout and use the ratchet in the score and play it back, it's going to play back a bass drum because the MIDI note 36 is attached to the bass drum sample. That you actually can't change. So in some ways, it's kind of not all that useful to create new maps within the Garrettin instruments or even the Note Performer, Smart Music, or Tap Space because you actually can't change where the samples are on the keyboard. So it doesn't serve you any purpose to change the bass drum, drum MIDI map to note number 48, for example. It, it, it serves you absolutely no purpose within the Garrettin instruments for Finale. So why bother? Well, if you are actually creating um, new devices, and I'm going to use battery for an example. Um, you know what? I do not want to change that. There we go. Uh, so again, if you're uh, creating new devices, battery, for example, which is a third party VST, this is important because the battery instruments don't necessarily have to have the same attachment of the samples to the specific percussion MIDI. Uh, or to the specific MIDI note on the keyboard, if that makes sense. So in this regard, it's important to use this percussion MIDI map editor if you want to use third-party VSTs. And that's why I created this battery here, because I'm going to show you a little bit of how to do this with the battery instrument. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go into my score manager and change my, uh, oops, not that, the device from Garrettin, I'm actually going to choose battery because I have battery installed on my computer. And when I do this, I can edit the player. And I'm going to get a blank instance of battery. Now, within this, I'm not going to go too deep into actually doing things in battery because this is, you know, something outside of Finale, which is not really 
part of the conquering finale, uh, you know, piece of it. But what I'm just going to illustrate here is that I can do something like add this what's called the Zion kit, and you can see that this Zion kit has a whole bunch of different sounds to it um, that are going to be mapped differently than any of the you know general MIDI maps or any of the Garreton maps. In fact, you can see in this instrument I have one, two, three, four, five different kick drums, right? I have how many different snare drums? It looks like seven different snare drums of, of sorts. So, you know, a whole bunch of different types of snares. And then even things that are like not even percussion instruments. There's like bass notes, the guitar chords, and like oh, na, na, na. <laughs> funny little vocal things. This is all part of the battery uh, uh, Zion kit, right? And you can kind of see somewhere, here it is, um, the notes that are attached to each of these instruments. So that kick drum is C1, this kick is C-sharp 1, uh, D1, uh, D-sharp 1, etc. So all of these cells basically attach to a different um, key. And even within battery, it is possible to actually switch um, the cells around. So again, this is totally customizable. This is the part of the finale instruments that we can't actually customize. I keep mentioning that you can't actually change the, the Jazz Fusion drum kit in finale. Well, if you're using a third-party VST like battery, you absolutely can change where the samples exist on which notes. So this is why having the ability to create MIDI maps in finale um, is important for third-party VSTs. All right, so awesome. So I've set uh, battery up with Zion Kit in the score manager. So now this drum set actually will use that sound set. And I believe if I just go in here. Yep. That's all of the uh, Zion Kit that you're hearing as I'm playing those, uh, playing those keys. However, the percussion layout is not going to match that at all. You know, these splash cymbals, hi-hats, all this stuff is kind of irrelevant to the Zion kit. So ultimately, I am going to have to create a new layout, and I'll just call this uh, Zion kit layout. Eventually, I'm going to have to come back in here to add all the note tapes. But before I even do that, I have to um, uh, create a new percussion uh, uh, MIDI map. So I'm just going to, oops, well, all right, they're going to want me to add one first. All oh, right, because I'm not assigning a percussion MIDI map. Okay, um, so I'm gonna have to go into battery, create a new map, and I'm gonna call this Zion Kit. And I'm gonna uh, add a note type, and I'm gonna look at my bass drums here. And you can actually see I do have you know six different bass drums and, and a and a, uh, a kick drum here. So I'm not gonna have to create too many custom uh, instruments, but I will have to eventually for some of those weirder things in the Zion kit. So um, let's just add bass drum. This will be bass drum one, basically. And uh, add note type, and I believe it's that one. All right, and then um, we can add another bass drum. This is gonna be bass drum two. Add note type, and that's gonna be the C sharp. So on and on and on, and um, this is where I'm going to go away, <laughs> and I'm actually going to um, stop the video here and continue to create this, and I will be back with you shortly or however long it's going to take me to do this, so uh, uh, I'll see you in a second. Okay, and I'm back just about 20 minutes later. Um, finally finished this percussion mini map editor, and you can see that I've got bass drum, bass drum 2, snare drum, all this stuff um, that matches... Uh, this Zion kit it just took a screenshot to help me out. But all of these instruments now, uh, starting from C2 octaves below middle C to the B, um, two octaves above middle C, four octaves of instruments I've added to this percussion MIDI map editor. And you can see that they're all here in sequential order. Um, I did end up using a lot of custom instruments. You can see you go up to custom 21 here. Uh, and when you do that and you go back in here, you'll actually see that those uh, instruments are now named like this. Interestingly, these will only be named for this particular MIDI map. So if you choose a different, or uh, if you create another MIDI map, you, you get to start over with these custom names is what I'm trying to say. Um, but this is what's going on. And so now I'm done. So now that I have that, the next step is that I need to have a percussion layout that matches that. So I'm gonna go into my drum set here and my uh, Zion kit layout here. 
And currently I only have uh, one note type here, but just to delete that so we can see it, we're starting from scratch. And um, you know, this is where this add all comes in really handy because again, you're uh, only viewing notes types in Zion Kit. Adding all will now add all of the instruments from this percussion MIDI map called Zion Kit, which I just created, which I know is exactly four octaves worth of notes and press add all. And you see all of my instruments appear in order. Uh, from the snare drum all the way down to Zion Vocal 2, which is custom. And uh, currently they're all uh, regular note heads set on uh, C, so I'm gonna have to edit this. So if you wanna give me another few minutes, I'm gonna go away once again. I've already shown you how to do this in the, the uh, percussion layout designer, but I just wanna see this through for you. So uh, I'm gonna go away again, give me a couple minutes, and I'll be back to show you the end result. And I'm back again about 10 minutes later. It took me to uh, finish this percussion layout designer for the Zion kit. But as you can see now, I have a full percussion layout with all of the instruments. And you can see the custom names, you know, get, they get their proper names, Zion guitar, Zion bass. And I've, you know, put these on different lines and spaces. I've, um, you know, give them different uh, note heads, all the things that you can do within the percussion layout designer. At some point, I realized I was getting down into the Lion, uh, Zion sound effects one and two and lick and everything. And I'm like, at, at a certain point, this <laughs> stops making a lot of sense within a, a written score. Um, I don't know that a player would necessarily know what to do with these instruments, but you never know. There's, there's cases where you can have electronic drum pads that can trigger these things. So you might need to... Um, you know, uh, ha have them on s special lines or whatever the case may be. So anyway, this is how you do this. So I just set up my percussion MIDI map. I set up my percussion layout to use that new Zion kit layout. And now after all of that is said and done, uh, about a million hours later, you can go into uh, Speedy Entry or Simple Entry and you can see all of your instruments will be available um, from that percussion MIDI map, from that um, percussion layout. There's a Zion Vocal 2. Um, all the things I'm just scrolling through, there's a Zion Synth sound effects and everything. And when you start to just play random notes on the keyboard to trigger all of these things, you will get the appropriate, oops, that's not actually on the map. There you go. You'll get all of the appropriate lines and spaces with the X's and note heads and everything. Again, it's meaningless, you know, unless, you, oh, that's an interesting sound, unless you start actually labeling thing, these things uh, with expressions and everything. But, um, so yeah, so that's, that's how you do it. That is the percussion MIDI map designer, why it's important, what you can do with it, Again, it's really most important for third-party VSTs. Um, maybe not something so crazy as the Zion kit from Battery, but uh, you know, any uh, any kit that you can imagine and dream up and build, you could put it in Finale in this uh, particular fashion. So that's how it works. I hope this has helped. Um, uh, the next video we're going to do in the pulverizing percussion uh, section is we're going to jump over to uh, Simple and Speedy and Hyperscribe, and I'm actually going to show you some tricks about entering the notes uh, within those tools. So that's uh, kind of the next part of it. But as far as this managing the score manager and percussion goes, this is the end of the line. We got to the second layer of the cake, and that's as far down as we can go in terms of customization and manipulation. So there it is. Uh, I hope this has helped. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and yeah, I will see you soon on the next video.